<laughs> G'day viewers. So, bayonets. Now, bayonet fencing is not really a extremely popular form of Western martial art for some reason, um, which is a little odd because for the entire 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, this is probably the primary practical battlefield form of martial arts still practiced by Western armies. Um, the, uh, during the Victorian era, uh, they were absolutely obsessed with bayonet fencing, um, bayonet versus sword, bayonet versus lance, bayonet versus guys on horseback, um, and were convinced that the bayonet was by far the most, the superior battlefield weapon. And it's a direct descendant of things like spear and pike and quarterstaff and other sorts of pole weapons that are from the Renaissance medieval period. So bayonet fencing has a lot to teach us, um, but people don't do an awful lot of it. And one of the reasons might be because you can't really get uh, a cheap and easy bayonet simulator. Um, so this video is going to rectify that situation. I'm going to teach you how to make a fencing musket um, in a relatively cheap and easy fashion so that you can all go off and go bayonet fencing. So most bayonet training is done with these. This is a Mokuto, which is a Japanese wooden bayonet fencing trainer. Now, uh, these things do have issues. Uh, this one's obviously fairly short. You can get them in other lengths, of course. Um, but the most obvious issue with them is the fact that it's a solid piece of wood, so it has no flex whatsoever. All you've got is this rubber stopper in the end, um, which for a primarily thrusting weapon, really does present some safety issues if you're going to be doing these um, with doing vigorous bouting with these. Uh, the other issue with them is as a solid piece of wood it can encourage you to do things with them that you would hesitate to do with an actual firearm assuming you wanted to fire it again afterwards. So you can treat this like a quarter staff and really whack it about whereas you don't really want to do that with an actual musket or rifle. Now, traditionally, European uh, bayonet fencing was practiced with what were called fencing muskets, um, which are a bit like this. Now, there were various historical designs used for fencing muskets. Uh, the traditional British method was to have a plunger bayonet inserted into the barrel like this. <laughs> Now those are technically uh, possible to make, they're not that difficult, uh, they are a little bit tricky. The biggest issue with the plunger is, uh, again, safety concerns, um, in that the mechanisms do occasionally jam, and when I was researching this I found out that they fell out of favour with the stage fighting community when a opera singer was bayoneted to death on stage during such a malfunction. So we don't want that to happen, that would be bad. Um, the American method was to use a flexible spring steel bayonet in the end of the rifle, like this. So that's how we're gonna go. We're gonna have a flexible bayonet on the end of a rifle. Um, now, the first thing you're going to need, of course, is the gun stock itself. You can get an actual wooden stock, like so. Uh, a lot of gun shops, if you ask them, will have clapped out gun stocks behind the counter that aren't really usable anymore, that they will probably sell you on the cheap. Um, if you are going to get an actual gun stock, the best thing to get is an old single shot 22 type thing, um, which is just a solid wooden stock like that with no holes for magazines or anything like that, which is nice and neat and easy. If you do get something that's got holes for magazines, um, you're going to have to fill it. Uh, so this one here, for example, if you have a look there, um, that's where the magazine went and that's had to be filled up with uh, epoxy filler, builder's bog. 
um, and underneath the barrel there was a lot of filling to be done as well. So big holes to fill in something like this. In the single shot 22, no holes to fill at all. So that's that's preferable, but really if you want to get a gun stock, you probably won't have much choice. You've just got to get whatever you can get. Um, wood or plastic is fine. Alternatively, you can just get yourself a gun-shaped bit of wood like this. Okay. Um, so these are produced commercially, uh, locally, which is where we got those, but you're quite capable of cutting this out of a, out of a piece of plywood and sanding it down yourself um, to a gun-like shape. Now, if you do that, the first thing you're going to need to do is route out a groove along here for the barrel to sit in. So I'm going to go and get that done now. So once you've got your slot in your uh, stock, then you're going to want to think about the barrel. So this is just a length of 19mm steel pipe, which is about the right size for an FA blade to slot into, and that's going to sit in like so. So then you just got to drill some holes and bolt it together, and you end up with something like this. Now the length of the barrel should be measured to simulate whatever it is that you are aiming to simulate. In this case, it's an 1853 Enfield, which means it's about 140 centimeters in overall length. Um, and on top of that, we're going to have a bayonet. So a uh, 18 inch or 45 centimeter bayonet goes on the end. But one of the nice things about this design is of course you can make multiple barrels. You can make a long one and a short one. And just by undoing a couple of bolts, go from brown best to 303 length um, in just a couple of minutes work. Um, so it's nice and versatile in that way. Uh, now we've got to think about bayonets. Now for the bayonet, I'm using an ordinary cheap epee blade with the tang cut off. Um, and you might need to grind down a little bit down here to get it to fit in the barrel, depending on the width of your barrel and the brand of epee. Um, but that's basically about the right size as is. Uh, now a word of warning here. This one I actually made with a rapier blade. Um, don't bother. It makes absolutely no difference to the overall feel and balance of the weapon. It's just a lot of extra work and extra expense um, for no real benefit. So don't bother using anything fancier than an epee blade. It's fine. Now, were I to just drop my epee blade down the barrel of this, it would basically disappear inside. Um, so I do want some protruding out to be the bayonet. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to measure how much epee you want sticking out and fill the rest of the space up just with a wooden spacer which just means a little piece of wooden dowel and that just slots in and will just sit in there like that. Now again this is adjustable, bayonets come in various lengths from sort of 12 to, to 24 inches um, and so just by changing the length of that spacer you can adjust the length of your bayonet very easily so you can explore different weapons, different systems. Um, having done that I then get my cut off epo blade and I slide it down. Now you'll notice I've just put a little bit of tape around there just for a little bit of packing so that it helps it sit firmly inside the barrel like so. It's not strictly necessary, it just helps. Um, now, the next thing you're gonna want is a rubber stopper to go over the end of the barrel. And this is just a rubber chair leg bottom. Um, so cut a hole out of the middle with a, with a hobby knife so that you've got a hole for the FA to go through and then you just slot it over your FA blade and onto the end of the barrel like so and that just slots over there and that is now sufficient to hold that FA and blade so it won't pop in and out it's actually held in there quite firmly but the whole thing is dismantleable really really easily um, so that is now your complete fencing musket now, you will notice that the ones that I'm using, I'm only taking the stocks up to there um, and having a long steel barrel, whereas most actual muskets and military rifles have the stock going quite close to the end of the barrel. Um, that's a deliberate choice, um, basically because I want to be able to cross bout this with things like sabers and having a wooden stock extending up there uh, that will get chewed up pretty quickly by a steel saber, whereas the steel pipe um, will handle that just fine. If that consideration doesn't bother you, if you're only going to do bayonet on bayonet, then there's no reason you can't make them out of a longer stock with the barrel 
only protruding a little bit beyond the wood. And that will certainly help in making sure that you're parrying with the stock of the rifle and not parrying with the barrel, which is a bad thing to do with the bayonet. Another approach to that problem is to use something like this. So this is just a wooden tool handle and I've sanded down the sides where the hands sit when you are holding it like a rifle and I've simply stuck my bit of pipe and bayonet on top of the supposed stock um, and because this is just a wooden tool handle it doesn't really matter if that stock gets chewed up by metal sabers so that's another approach that you might choose to make um, which is easier possibly a little bit cheaper than using the gun stocks. Now bayonet drill was also practiced with things like this. So this is a replica of a boarding pike. Um, and those of you who, uh, you may remember the video I made a couple of months ago about a trip to Lens um, where we got to play with a genuine one of these. Okay, so the shaft was quite light. The head was small and pointy and it had long langets down there to protect the shaft like so. So this is my replica that I've made. Now, um, like a wooden bayonet trainer, this has no flex. If I bouted with this, even with this nice little safety tip on the end of it, it's still fairly close to a lethal weapon if you go too vigorously. Um, so you can use exactly the same idea to make a practice pike trainer. So here is the boarding pike simulator. So it's exactly the same idea. You've got your wooden shaft, you've got a steel pipe fitted to the end, and inside the steel pipe, you've got an epee blade um, held in simply with this rubber stopper there, which is sufficient to help it sliding out and a little bit of padding down the bottom. Um, and it's exactly the same length and size as the real thing. Um, so that's an alternative way of making a thing that you could do bayonet drill with um, or if you want to simulate something like a boarding pike or spear or something like that. Our uh, final word just on common sense legalities. In New South Wales and I suspect in most Australian states and territories it is perfectly legal to carry a uh, replica of an antique firearm. So a musket or a flintlock pistol or something like that is fine. Uh, you don't need any sort of licensing. Um, that said, if you use it in an offensive manner, you can get arrested. So don't wave it about in public. Don't threaten people with it. You know, don't dress up as Osama bin Laden and try and take it in the aeroplane with you. Okay, use some common sense. It still does look a little bit like a gun. Um, there are also obviously places in the world where carrying anything gun-like uh, will land you in trouble with the constabulary. There are places in the world where uh, the constabulary will shoot you if they think you are armed and dangerous, and even places where members of the general public will shoot you if they think you're armed and dangerous. So if you are unfortunate enough to live in such a place, uh, use some common sense. Paint the thing bright blue or do something else to make it obviously clear it's not a functioning weapon. So, there you are, that's how to make a fencing musket. Now, we're actually about to start a 10 week course on 19th century bayonet fencing. So, in about three months time, I'm gonna put up another video of our end of term bouting, so you can see these weapons in action once we actually know what we're doing with them. Um, so check back in about three months and uh, see how these weapons have gone in practice.